It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey guys, Gronk here, calling a 30-second hair huddle. When it comes to tackling hair loss, Hims has you covered. From clinically proven regrowth treatments to thickening shampoo and conditioner. Just go to 4 for a free consultation. Then a licensed medical provider can help you with your game plan. If prescribed, Hims ships directly to your door. Get your hair back in the game with Hims. Try today and get a 90-day money-back guarantee at 4 Just go to 4 slash NFL. That's 4 slash NFL. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. You are Locked On Fantasy, your daily NFL fantasy podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast. It's here. It's our first matchup Wednesday of the season. That means we're going to break down the first half of games here on the Week 1 slate. We've been doing all our research, getting ready for the season here in fantasy football. Well, the games are here with the NFL season kicking off here on Thursday night. The Buccaneers and Cowboys, we will break that game down for you as well. Seven other games on today's show, we'll do the back half of the games all the way through Sunday and Monday Night Football there for you on Thursday show. But we got to dive in here soon to break down the games. We're excited. We want to see what's going on, where you want to go with your players this week, the matchups to avoid and to exploit here in week one. So we'll get into it here in a moment. But I do have to remind you, you have to be checking out the Ultimate season preview here on Locked On. The NFL season is about to begin, as we know, and nobody covers it like the Locked On Podcast Network. August 30th, we started all the way through September 8th. Locked On's ultimate season preview is taking you here through every team and every division with the help of Odyssey's Ross Tucker and Jason LaCanfora. Follow the ultimate season preview 2021 feed on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast all the way through today. Check it out if you missed any of that, August 30th through September 8th. We had a great run here, so check it out to get you ready for the 2021 NFL season. Now, we're going to do the same thing here to get you ready for the first games of the season here on Locked On Fantasy Football. And uh, Let's dive right in, shall we, and look at the Buccaneers-Cowboys game, a much-anticipated matchup to kick off the season. Let's look at the betting lines. According to FanDuel, we have eight a half is the spread, so it's ballooned here in favor of Tampa, the home team, Super Bowl champions, getting their rings against Dallas, the team still chasing that Super Bowl elusive uh, next one for Jerry Jones. 51 and a half is your over-under, so we're expecting a pretty nice game from both sides, but we know the Buccaneers defense coming off a dominant performance there in the Super Bowl, shutting down Patrick Mahomes, it's Dak Prescott coming back from the shoulder injury as well as the ankle that cut short his 2020 season. So what do we expect from these teams? Let's start with the easy part, the Buccaneers and what we think they're going to do here. Well, look, the Buccaneers are loaded everywhere. It's a great matchup across the board. You have Trayvon Diggs, not a bad young corner there. You also have Micah Parsons, a linebacker that the Cowboys are excited about. They hope he can be their version of Devin White there for what Tampa has in the middle of the field. So we'll see how that plays out with Dan Quinn's defense there. It's a familiar defense because Dan Quinn, of course, came from the NFC South and the Atlanta Falcons. So when you look at that, just a similar style of defense as you're going to expect, a defense in transition. That means good things for Tom Brady here and the Buccaneers and what they can do offensively in this game. So Tom Brady should be solid. I don't think it's going to be a hard day at the office for him. I think he's going to throw to his principles mainly. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, maybe a big play to Antonio Brown. Do I extend to Rob Gronkowski in this one? Yes, there's a good chance Gronk is going to pop into the end zone here to help uh, pop the champagne and celebrate another Super Bowl ring with Tom Brady. So really touchdown dependent early with Gronkowski, but I think you're going to see more of that 11 personnel display itself here, especially with the speed of Parsons on the field. The Cowboys actually being pretty good and better at safety. They've been traditionally bad against the tight end. So not surprising if Gronk scores, but we're not going to be sure of the volume there between the third receiver, Brown, and their top tight end, Gronkowski, especially with O.J. Howard back in the mix. But feel good about Evans and Godwin. Lock them in as wide receiver twos. 
Godwin I like a little bit more working in the middle of the field. I think uh, Evans is more the touchdown guy. You do have to look at uh, Brown being a factor as well, working in the middle of the field. He's versatile as a route runner with Godwin here. So you can look at Brown as a wide receiver three in this one. So about where you drafted all these guys. In the backfield, take your chances there. Who do they go with to close the game? The game script would say it's a Ronald Jones type game in the second half as they might be playing with lead and going that direction. It's really hard to navigate between Leonard Fournette and now Gio Bernard. Bernard trying to play in this game here, but I don't think they'll need a lot of checkdowns to Fournette in this game. So if I'm going to go with a Buccaneers back, looking at a flex spot, I look at Ronald Jones. He could also pop into the end zone. So a little bit touchdown dependent early with Jones and Gronkowski. Pretty steady target volume for Evans, Godwin, and Brown. And you look at the guy tying it all together in Tom Brady, who should have a solid game. I don't know if he's going to have to throw a ton, but expect multiple touchdowns, well over 200 yards passing here for Brady. Solid start to the season here, and uh, be wary again of using the Buccaneers' backs in fantasy football this season. But this is a good spot against, again, more for Jones, I think. A little bit more than Fournette. Fournette is there if you want him to use him. He did have a good playoff run, but again, I, I'm not having high expectations until I see how this plays out between the three backs now in Tampa. The Bucks defense, not a bad play either. If you think uh, Dak Prescott and this offensive line is banged up, Zach Martin is not going to be in the game because he's on the COVID list, the elite right guard, many Years in the league, Lyle Collins could also miss the game at right tackle. So some opportunities for that pass rush. Shaquille Barrett to Jason Pierre-Paul. We know the Buccaneers will probably be playing with the lead so they can tee off a little bit in the pass rush. We know part of that is their run defense is very good. Are you going to see Ezekiel Elliott for that reason? No. I think Elliott can get it done in the passing game a little bit. Maybe some checkdowns, dump-offs against that pass rush that help his value here. And always a good chance to score a touchdown for Anyone there, you're still going to play C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. There's going to be some volume in the passing game for sure as the Cowboys are probably going to be in a negative game script in this one as, again, it's easier to attack still the Buccaneers' pass defense, even with that pass rush and improved secondary, versus uh, going after the run defense, which two years in a row has been the number one in the NFL. So keep that in mind. Again, Prescott, lower your expectations. I think he's a QB1, but lower end this week. Lamb and Cooper and Gallup will be fine at their respective spots. I think in order, I like Lamb as a wide receiver 1 this week, Cooper as a wide receiver 2, and Gallup as a wide receiver 3. Ezekiel Elliott falls more into RB2 status this week, but still very startable and should be in your lineups every week. Do not be scared again initially by the Bucks' run defense. So that's a breakdown of that game. Let's go to our second game. There, as we flip from the Thursday night game on NBC over to the 1 p.m. Eastern Time window, there the regular slate of games, and we'll look at the Bills and the Steelers here. Six and a half spread for the Bills. It's kind of held steady around a touchdown, 40 and a half. So expecting some defense, a little bit more defense to be played in this game. Now, it's not the greatest early matchup for Josh Allen, but he's not out of your lineups. He's a top three quarterback. However, you look at it. He's always in your lineup. I think you have to temper expectations as well with T.J. Watt in that pass rush, Minka Fitzpatrick on the back end. There are some challenges there against his secondary and overall uh, pressure defense for the Steelers. So not expecting a huge Josh Allen game. I'm totally going to avoid the running backs here, Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. I need to see how that plays out. Plus the Steelers are pretty good against the run as well. Stefan Diggs is in there, but I'm not sure I'm going to extend to anyone else in this Bills passing game. So really... Allen uh, maybe still in the top 12, but more of a lower QB one this week. He's going to get it done for you. But Stefan Diggs, always a wide receiver one in your lineups this week. So those guys are not necessarily matchup proof, but those are the guys that have to be in there. You don't have to really extend anywhere else against the Steelers D. Now let's look at the Steelers offense here in this game as they play one of the favorite teams in Canada up there near the border in Buffalo, and Najee Harris is the most anticipated play in this game for sure. The rookie running back, first-round pick from Alabama. You can expect a huge volume for Najee Harris because this Bills uh, team is pretty active in linebacker. I think they've got improved a little bit in the pass rush. We know they have Tredavious White and some underrated defensive backs there. So I don't see any scenario where the Steelers, after really struggling offensively there, throwing the ball against the Bills in last year's matchup where they want to really drop back Ben Roethlisberger often. So you're avoiding Ben Roethlisberger, 
Be careful about Deontay Johnson. I think he drops down to wide receiver three, potentially seeing a lot of white in coverage on the outside. Chase Claypool has some upside with the big plays and touchdowns, but again, temperate to wide receiver three this week. And Juju Smith-Schuster, I'm not interested at all in playing in this game. So really, Harris, you look at as an RB2. Solid, he's going to get that volume that we expect when we drafted him that high in fantasy football ahead of the season. You're looking then... Wide receivers, again, Johnson could have a little bit tough time. All, none of these receivers really produced in the matchup in Buffalo last year. So really you have lower expectations. If you need to get one in, again, no higher than wide receiver three and totally off the board with Juju this week. And Ben Roethlisberger, only a select streamer. He's not a guy you're looking at at all in this game this week. So next week maybe when they play Cincinnati, but not in this one for sure with Big Ben. So very careful about Big Ben, especially the way he closed out the season with that ugly game against the Browns there in the wildcard playoffs. All right, so we've got uh, there a couple games under our belt here, breaking them down. It feels good, doesn't it? We're talking about games again and breaking them down for you, looking at uh, over-unders and point spreads also to help us figure out how things are going to go with these games and expected to uh, point totals and scoring and offense and all that. It's that time of the year again. We know that and all eyes are now turning to football. Teams are back on the gridiron to start the NFL season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including online's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest two hundred thousand dollar NFL survivor contest open now at Bet Online. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your one hundred percent welcome bonus. And be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo. We just talked about that game between the Buccaneers and Cowboys. Make a bet on the Thursday, September 9th season opener between the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers and Dallas Cowboys. By the way, I do like the Buccaneers to cover that spread there and the game potentially going over. If you lose, your wager will be refunded up to $25. So it's a free bet there for new customers only when signing up and using the promo code NFL100. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports from football basketball boxing right down to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait and take advantage of all the great offers available for the 2021 season bet online your online sportsbook experts all you have to do is enter the promo code locked on and you'll get that welcome bonus david harrison here the locked on washington football team podcast celebrating with you a 21 grain salute to a less boring sandwich thanks to dave's killer bread i don't know about you guys but when i eat pizza i eat it for the toppings not the crust and when i eat a sandwich it's for what's inside the bread not for the bread but when i throw a sandwich on 21 whole grains and seeds thin sliced bread from dave's killer bread it is the epitome of addition by subtraction that thin sliced bread lets me focus on what's inside the sandwich but also adds to the sandwich with killer taste killer texture killer nutrition a subtle sweetness and a seed coated crust dave's killer bread is america's number one organic bread for a reason it tastes so stinking good dave's killer bread is made with the highest quality organic and non-gmo ingredients and is power packed with whole grains fiber and protein visit daveskillerbread.com to learn more and look for dave's killer bread in the bread aisle of your local grocery store all right let's continue looking at the early side games here of week number one we're using uh the betting lines here on FanDuel as of right now with the spread and the over-under. Panthers-Jets, not as marquee, of course, as the Buccaneers, Cowboys, Bill Steelers, but a lot of interesting storylines in this one, including the Sam Darnold slash Robbie Anderson revenge game. Look at who's on the schedule, of course. Jets in week one. Zach Wilson making his debut as the Jets starting quarterback. You also have uh, brand new vibes there with uh, Robert Sala taking over the defense and head coaching duties, as well as Michael Floor all sliding over from the 49ers. So some positive energy flowing to the Jets. That Adam Gaze time is over. Not a lot around Sam Darnold. If you're in a deep streaming situation with Sam Darnold, certainly you can look at him, maybe in DFS as well this week. Two QB League Superflex, this is the time you'd use Sam Darnold. He's going to be motivated, but more helpful in this game is that the Jets' defense is in transition. Still trying to figure out their pass rush, trying to figure out uh, guys on the back end, there for Salah. So they're going to have some issues there, mainly with their pass defense. The run defense, I think it will be a little bit more improved, but still very vulnerable there. So Christian McCaffrey, lock and load your number one overall pick as an elite RB1, the top on the board this week. Now look at the Panthers receivers. We've been on Robbie Anderson a lot more than DJ Moore. 
certainly you can play DJ Moore in this one because there's certainly big plays available. I look at DJ Moore, however, as a wide receiver three. Well, I like Robbie Anderson bumping up to wide receiver two. He had a big week one last season in his Panthers debut. Now he gets to go against this week secondary. And Darnold certainly is going to trust Anderson most, a little bit ahead of Moore early in the season. So Moore wide receiver three, Anderson wide receiver two, if you need Darnold, he's a streamer. McCaffrey, you know what we're going to do with him. I'm not going to extend to Terrace, Marshall, anyone like that in this game just yet. I want to see how it plays out with his wide receiver core with the Panthers. But expect a lot of Christian McCaffrey as the Panthers try to pull this one away. Five and a half is a pretty healthy spread in their favor as the new look Jets go on the road here. Now, where can you go with the Jets? I mean, keep in mind this Panther secondary has improved. They added J.C. Horn in the draft as their first round pick. So they got some decent corners here. We know they've got to Jeremy Chin and Brian Burns and some playmakers there. So can't trust a lot of this uh, Jets offense here immediately. If you need to play anyone, I'm looking at Corey Davis. Just by volume alone, he's their number one receiver on the outside. I'm not going to really look at Elijah Moore. I can't look at the rookie Michael Carter out of the backfield as we're trying to figure out Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson, LaMichael P. Ryan. I want to avoid that old situation until I get some clarity from where LaFleur wants to go in this backfield with a very good offensive line, actually, with Makai Becton, Elijah Vera Tucker. Two guys on the left side there. So Jets' offensive line is going to surprise people. The running game, the passing game is all going to be surprising. But in this game, just stick to Corey Davis here as wide receiver three. Let's wait and see with the Jets before we go all in because that's how we have to treat them in this game like we've treated them all off season as well. 45 and a half over under. So I'm not expecting a points bonanza there. So not a lot to, to trust on the Jets. So I would avoid everyone except Davis. And again, if you're looking for a defense that could make some plays here, it is a Still a rookie quarterback making his first start. It's on the road. The Panthers do have some active guys all over the pass rush that could make some plays here, maybe take advantage of a Wilson mistake. So Panthers, not a bad streaming defense. Certainly we're not going with the Jets, even though Darnold is on the other side of the field. I think Darnold is going to get the better of the Jets in this matchup. The next game is an all-AFC South affair. The Jaguars are actually favored on the road in Houston. Two and a half points. It is ballooned to. It was a pick em early. Slight uh, favoritism towards the Jaguars now. A little bit close to a field goal favorites. Only 44.5, so not expecting a lot of offense. I think this could actually have a little bit more offense than we think because I think both defenses are not very reliable. If you need Trevor Lawrence as a streamer, QB2, a super flex, all that, I think you can look at him for sure. This Texans defense really is terrible. I think you'll see a lot of James Robinson on the ground. I know they've added some options, Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson with – Travis Etienne on the shelf here, but it's still going to be James Robinson. They trust him. Very productive as an undrafted rookie last year. New coaching staff with Daryl Bevel. They're going to have to go in Robinson's direction. They want to be run heavy anyway. You'll see some hide for sure because that Urban Meyer connection, but I think they'll play some inspired ball here. Now, it's hard to know where we go with the receivers, just like in the preseason with DJ Chark versus LaVisca Chenault versus... Marvin Jones, I think we'll see that play out a little bit against this Texans secondary. But I still feel most uh, clear about Chark and his role. He's the most talented receiver in the number one. Jones is a complimentary veteran at this point on the outside. Cheneau is relying a lot on bubble screens and all that. So be careful. There's been a hype around Cheneau and Jones, mainly because we haven't seen DJ Chark with a finger injury there in the preseason. But Chark, to me, I follow the talent, and Chark is the guy that's going to come through. So Lawrence, Chark, Robinson, obviously not going anywhere else. If you need the Jaguars' D, be wary of that because I think this Texans offense is more capable than you think. So if you need David Johnson this week, I think he's the back to look at more so than Philip Lindsay is the RB2, especially in half-point and full-point PPRs. As he's got to get involved in the passing game. Brandon Cooks is their best receiver. Then it drops down to Anthony Miller, the rookie Nico Collins here. They added Danny Amendola here for desperation, so... After uh, moving Randall Cobb, I don't think they feel totally comfortable with Miller taking over the slot role, so we'll see about that. But none of those guys are interesting here. Basically, you're looking at Brandon Cooks and David Johnson. Now, they're going to get volume by default. I mean, again, I expect the Texans to trail. It'll be rather close in this one. Don't expect a lot of points, but Cooks is going to rack up a lot of targets, we know, from Tyrod Taylor at quarterback here. If you're looking at DFS, Tyrod is not a bad play. He can run, give you some... Uh, floor production there and again he's going to throw the ball to Cooks find some other guys spread the ball around to David Johnson getting involved so I would limit it to Cooks and Johnson there in redraft leagues if you're feeling a little frisky and looking for some value maybe a Philip Lindsay pops in there in DFS or Taylor their uh, deep QB play only this week for 
the replacement for Deshaun Watson. So unfortunately, Deshaun Watson not in there for this potential big game that he could have had uh, dueling his fellow Clemson quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. Again, Jaguars Texans defense, they're going to be both uh, terrible for most of the season. Part of that low number is not completely trusting the offenses there. We have a pretty big total for this next game, 52 and a half. This is in Nashville. This is between the Titans and the Cardinals. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. The Titans are mild favorites at home. I actually like the Cardinals to pull off the upset here on the road. I don't trust the Titans' new look defense to slow down Kyler Murray and the new look offense for the Cardinals. So let's look at them first. Kyler Murray, I think he's a QB one for sure. We know that. He's in the top three, but I think he could end up being the highest scorer of the week. He was that for many weeks last year. So don't buy into the fact that he's not going to be running as much. He's going to find other ways to produce with DeAndre Hopkins. We know he's going to lock and load with him. So Hopkins, an elite wide receiver one, along with Murray. You look elsewhere, Rondell Moore, deep sleeper maybe. They could deploy the rookie here. The Titans can't really keep up with the speed, open field abilities here. So He's a deep sleeper looking at, but I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not trusting A.J. Green or anyone else with this Cardinals receiving court. I think you're going to see a lot of more behind Hopkins. Chase Edmonds you can put in for sure against this Titans defense. So the principles for the Cardinals, again, Murray, QB1, highest maybe on the board this week. Hopkins, no lower than a top five receiver this week in this matchup. And looking at... Uh, the value of Chase Edmonds still RB2 type of flex. I'm not going to go any higher than that with Edmonds yet until we see what his role is, especially with James Conner uh, maybe eating some touches there for Arizona. So a lot of things to look at there, wait and see approach. Again, the Cardinals don't have a lot there, but Murray's going to get it done. Hopkins is going to get it done. Everything else is a little bit of an extension for you this week, and you're obviously going to avoid the defense with the explosive Titans on the field as well. So yeah, good implied total for both teams here in a close game with a 52 and a half. There, again, I like the Cardinals, the Titans. Your usual is Derrick Henry, solid RB1 elite. He's going to deliver for you what you need. Ryan Tannehill, good play in a shootout potentially with Kyler Murray. A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, the Cardinals secondary in a bit of transition here once again. So they can be exploited with both Titans' uh, main receivers here. I'm not going to go to Anthony Ferks or anything extra like that in this game, avoiding the defenses. So I look at uh, Brown having a solid potential to finish in the top 10 here as a wide receiver one. Julio, bump him up from wide receiver three, where, which I think he really is, to wide receiver two, now fully healthy at least early in the season. So some points are going to be put up there. So a lot of fun, a lot of uh, exposure you want in DFS as much as possible to this game because Titans Cardinals is going to live up to expectations with Two overrated defenses in transition. I do like the Cardinals with the, by the way, J.J. Watt facing a team from the AFC South, cleaning up a little bit late in the game. But nothing to see here in terms of worrying about the offensive principles on either team. Let's keep it simple. Roll out your studs in week one, and the Titans and Cardinals are certainly going to have some high-scoring players on their teams. All right, we will get into our final three first half of the game schedule here of week one. Matchups: uh, Falcons, Eagles, Chargers, Washington, 49ers, and Lions. We'll do that, and we'll do the back half of the games there on Thursday show in a very similar way as this one. I do have to remind you about Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. What's your favorite Built Bar flavor? There are nine delicious core flavors that you can check out. I'm a Built Bar fan, and if you've talked to any one of us, we're definitely passionate about our favorites. Some of mine I've mentioned on the show: mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. That's because. They're covered in 100% chocolate, so it's like getting double chocolate, soft and easy to chew. The only way you can get in on all the Bilt Bar flavors is getting a mix box where you can try two each of nine flavors. Then you can lock on to your favorite here of the Bilt Bars, and really you will not go back to any other protein bar once you try Bilt Bar. They're the best tasting. Their Bilt Bars are, but they're also healthy for you. Most of the flavors have 17 to 8 grams protein, 130 to 180 calories, only 4 to 5 grams Sugar and only 4 to 5 grams net carbs. Nine amazing core flavors, all tasty, all healthy. And also look out for some of their special flavors as well. Order today and get whatever you like from Built Bar. Go to BuiltBar.com and use the promo code LOCK15. You'll get 15% off your first order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. It's also that time of year again when we 
our diving indoor pools. That means our fantasy football and betting pools. The football season is back. Let's make the most of it with a better way to create your custom pool at runyourpool.com, the premier sports pool hosting service. Run Your Pool makes it ridiculously easy to run a football pool with friends, family, or office mates. They offer dozens of formats, including Survivor, Pick'em Squares, Margin, Confidence Pool, 33, and more. Run Your Pool hosts formats for NFL and college football, the one-week games, full season playoffs, or the Super Bowl. Unlike other fantasy sports platforms, Run Your Pool has options and settings to make it your own. You can even brand your pool for your local business, bar, or restaurant. Reconnect with friends and join nearly 2 million fantasy football fans to make every game action-packed this season. Check them out today and get $10 off at runyourpool.com slash locked on. Or use the promo code locked on at checkout. Anywhere, everywhere in the world, Run Your Pool helps friends and colleagues compete. The NFL season starts tomorrow, September 9th. Start today at runyourpool.com slash locked on and have your pool up and running in minutes. Runyourpool.com slash locked on. All right, Falcons and Eagles. This one is literally for the birds and two new look teams here. Two rookie head coaches, Arthur Smith in one corner for the host Atlanta Falcons. They're three-point favorites here. Pretty good uh, action here. We expect uh, definitely some points in this one. Eagles, uh, Jalen Hurts with Nick Sirianni. So we'll see how that plays out here for this game. But I expect a lot of points and a lot of your principles going off in this game as well. So Titans-Cardinals is a good one. This one is also a high-scoring affair. So let's start with the Falcons. Matt Ryan certainly comes in as a top-12 QB for me this week. Very usable. Remember, he's from the Philadelphia area. He likes playing against the Eagles. He prefers to do it at home in the comfort of, of the Dome. He's going to have Kyle Pitts. The Eagles, we know, have had historic recent struggles with tight ends. So good spot for the rookie immediately to get his feet wet in the NFL and make some big plays for the Falcons. Calvin Ridley locked and loaded. He is a top 5 to 10 wide receiver every week. He's just going to get that much target volume. We know how consistent he was with Julio Jones not available for most of the season. Now, Julio Jones is not available for any of the season, so you can go there with those two guys for sure. They're going to come through for you with Matt Ryan. I also think Russell Gage comes in as a sneaky wide receiver three that we're going to look at, so Gage certainly has some value there in deeper leagues if you're looking to platoon that position or flex play. Russell Gage certainly has some value here against this Eagles secondary. On the Eagles side of things, Jalen Hurts comes in to me. He's going to produce pretty well. QB one this week. We've drafted him that way. The running ability there in the Falcons defense, really thin there in the front seven. So he's going to have some opportunities to get some Yards and production that way. Dallas Goddard is going to be involved right away. The tight ends, I think Zach Ertz, a deeper sleeper there to play at tight end. But Dallas Goddard comes in solid. You can trust him for sure. The good chemistry between him and Ertz. Uh, Ertz is also locked in with Ertz. So those two guys will get be busy, especially with some questions marks at the receiving core. I know Jalen Hurts has a good chemistry with Jalen Rieger. We liked him as a sleeper, but... I think the guy, Devonta Smith, are going to get him going. Remember, it's very familiar territory for Devonta Smith uh, playing for Alabama. They played a lot of big games, we know, in Georgia. So keep that in mind. Devonta's going to be revved up to play his game here. But trust the tight ends a little bit more in the passing game. Miles Sanders, of course, is going to be an RB2 for you this week as well. So, yeah, play all the main guys that you look at for your Eagles where you've drafted in the position. But don't extend too far if you need an extra receiver this week from these two teams, you're certainly going Gage over Rieger. And don't forget about Mike Davis. He's going to get involved in the passing game as well. For now, he's a solid RB2 or flex because you look at his usage, it's going to be there for the Falcons. I know they're trying to remix this uh, backup situation behind him. They added Wayne Gallman, but still I think Mike Davis was signed to be kind of a starter here and a centerpiece for a run-heavier offense with Arthur Smith. So keep that in mind. Again, we'll see. Gage produced a little bit. He's okay with these uh, 12 personnel sets you're going to see with Hayden Hurst and Kyle Pitts, but they're going to move Kyle Pitts all around, and he can have a huge game here along with Ridley and a sneaky game for Gage and Smith at wide receiver in this one. Let us flip from Atlanta, and let's go to our nation's capital to the Washington football team hosting the Los Angeles Chargers. Another new coach breaking in here, Brandon Staley, debuts as Chargers. I actually like the Chargers as one-point favorites. It's a low-scoring uh, total here, 44 and a half. so be careful there. Let's start with Washington a little bit easier. I'm not going to go with Ryan Fitzpatrick this week, not at all, but 
You have to keep Terry McLaurin in. I think he drops more into wide receiver two status, potentially with the Chargers defense being improved under Staley, maybe putting some pressure on the front of Washington. But I, I think McLaurin's going to come through. I think it could definitely be outside the top 12 of this position this week, but certainly a play. Antonio Gibson always has to be in your lineup there as a borderline RB1, RB2. I like him as an RB1. The Chargers struggle a little bit more with run defense and then pass defense, I think, with Staley. So I think you look at Gibson, Logan Thomas, if you need him a tight end, he's solidly in the top 12 in the back half of that position right where you drafted him here. Washington football team defense, Chargers defense, both have a little bit of appeal here, some sacks, maybe some turnovers here. Fitzpatrick, we know, is uh, Fitz magic, but sometimes he can be Fitz tragic in turn with the ball and get streaky with the interceptions as well as the touchdown. So if I'm going to lean toward one game, multiple touchdown or multiple interception, I'm leaning toward the latter for Fitzpatrick. Justin Herbert could have a tough time as well. I know the Chargers have uh, spent some good money upgrading their offensive line, but uh, have some issues early to start the season. So Herbert's going to see Chase Young, a guy coming after him pretty hard. This uh, pass rush, this uh, secondary has improved as well with William Jackson the third. So it could be a little bit tough for Keenan Allen. So Keenan Allen drops more into wide receiver 2-3 borderline for me. Herbert, if I've got a better option on my bench, I'm going there. Over Herbert, again, tough way to start your sophomore season. They're facing this pass rush and overall gritty defense, especially with guys like uh, Jamin Davis. They're the rookie from Kentucky on the second level, making some plays to stop those intermediate throws. If you need Jared Cook, you could look at him this week. A uh, bit of a sleeper there overall at uh, tight end of the season. They did give him extension. He's been in the Joe Lombardi system before from New Orleans, and uh, they need to replace Hunter Henry here. And really... You're trying to figure out who's going to be their number two wide receiver between Mike Williams, the rookie Josh Palmer. A lot of question marks there. there. So, again, we're going to have to find some production from uh, Herbert in this one. We're not trusting him on the road in this tough spot again. I think it's going to be a lower scoring game than you think. A lot of it's going to flow through Gibson for Washington and his counterpart, Austin Eckler, here, fully healthy for the Chargers. So I think that both of those backs will be busy and limit your expectations here for the passing game of either team with that point total and that implied a total well under 30 points for both teams here in the opener. The final game we'll get to here, 49ers and Lions. The 49ers are opening a 7.5 point favorites. Only 45 is the over-under. 49ers trying to find their way a little bit offensively. Coming, banged up. Uh, Brandon Ayuk banged up again. You got uh, Debo Samuel coming off his share of injuries. Uh, George Kittle, injury riddled. So at least uh, they're all three healthy along with Jimmy Garoppolo. So early in the season with them and Raheem Mostert, you got to trust them. They're the principles of the 49ers. So in order, George Kittle, top three, tight end one, as we expect. Brandon Ayuk, if he's healthy and good enough to go in this game, which we expect, you're looking at him as a wide receiver three, I think, more so. I don't think the passing volume is going to be pretty high for the 49ers. As they can run in this one. And uh, same thing with Debo Samuel, no higher than wide receiver three. Jimmy Garoppolo, your sneaky streamer, DFS played in a deeper late this week. While he has a starting job and Trey Lance necessarily can't play with the hand injury, that's going to help Garoppolo get all the touches at quarterback here and help him. So I I can see two touchdowns for sure. I wouldn't say it's going to go that much higher because I trust Raheem Mostert to have a big game as the game script should be favorable and the run defense for the Lions stinks. So you should see a lot of Raheem Mostert. I like him as a RB2 with upside this week. And I like Trey Sermon. I think he's going to get involved with the game script being positive in the second half. They want to rotate both these guys in. The impressive rookie from Ohio State slash Oklahoma here in this run system. So looking at Mostert, solid RB2. I think Sermon for now you're going to look at as a rookie immediately as a flex here in this game. Now where do you go with the Lions? TJ Hawkinson for sure. We're going to monitor DeAndre Swift and that injury If they have to pivot to Jamal Williams, I don't know if I like it very much against this 49ers run defense if it's a split between it hurting Swift and Williams, uh, and we're not going to be sure of their touches, especially with negative game script against the 49ers D. So a lot of concerns there. Watch Swift and his status and uh, Williams. Again, if one of them, especially Swift, is out, then you're looking at Williams having a little bit more value because he's going to get most of the backfield touches here and the checkdowns here when they're trailing. So keep that in mind. As far as the passing game goes, you can't trust Jared Goff or any of his receivers in flux here. The only one you can trust is TJ Hawkinson. He's going to be with his buddy George Kittle from Iowa. They did a barbecue commercial together. So they're good friends. They're going to meet before the game, have a little talk. And Hawkinson's probably going to get some volume here by default. And that's why we drafted Hawkinson early as a tight end, because he's essentially 
their best and number one receiver, and Goff likes throwing the middle of the field to tight ends as well. So Hawkinson, the, keep in mind the 49ers at defense was the best against a tight end, so you're not expecting a huge game from Hawkinson, but I think he's definitely startable every week here for the Lions just out of uh, pure target share that he's going to get for Detroit. And while Kittle's healthy, enjoy it. I think Kittle goes off in this game as well as the running game for the 40. Niners, uh, so again, they'll get the job done enough in the passing game, but not enough where I don't see Ayuk or Samuel having that big, big game, especially uh, coming off their own injuries here in 2021. All right, so we've broken down all those games, uh, the first half of the games, eight. That means eight more in the back half. We'll do the same thing. Uh, the drill will repeat on Thursday there. Betting on the NFL doesn't have to be a guessing game. If you listen to the new Locked on Bets podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling, your daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow Locked on Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag wherever you get your podcasts. This wraps up this edition of Locked on Fantasy Football with Smiley here. We're matchup Wednesday. We'll follow it with matchup Thursday. And then, don't forget, Friday, lineup Friday, we'll put all this in a blender and look at at it from a DFS perspective for you there and how to fill out your lineups there. If you're new to DFS, we'll got you covered there as well uh, to try out FanDuel for sure. For Locked on Fantasy Football, this has been Vinny Iyer. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.